Good morning, students. Welcome back to our Tito lecture. Now, today we will be covering a high-level snapshot of what a strategic planning process is. Now, please keep in mind that this is, in a layman language, the Bible of your entire E2 book. So, it will be a long duration class. We will talk about a lot of topics, but I will try and go slow so that I can give you utmost clarity. So again, the topic for today is strategic planning process. Now, if you see the board, we have I've drawn an entire diagram in terms of how the strategic planning process works. So it's a step by step process. We will walk through every step. And this is what is a summary of enterprise management. Now, the journey of the strategic planning process starts from a mission statement. So if you see against the mission statement I have written what? So mission statement of any organization does not change. So mission statement is the what does the organization want to do? What does the organization want to achieve? So it's black and white, it's cast in stone, it is communicated to all stakeholders and it does not change. So if you were to build a hierarchy, mission statement is something that comes on top. Generally, people get confused between a mission statement and a vision statement. So, mission is bigger than the vision. So, if mission is the what of an organization, vision is how and by when. So, mission is forever. Vision statement is what companies prepare for a foreseeable future. Now, that foreseeable future is 3 to 5 years approximately. So, how would we achieve the mission statement? By where would we achieve a mission statement? So mission statement is broken down into a sub-element which is what we call as a vision statement. Now as I said vision statement is for a period of 3 to 5 years. Now to achieve my vision statement I need to prepare my goals. So goals are specific actions and goals by virtue of being specific actions will be for a period of up to 12 months. So the hierarchy would be the mission statement followed by vision and then followed by goals. Now if you see this bracket, now this entire bracket is the starting point for the strategic planning process. An organization needs to know what is that it wants to achieve because all actions will be directed will, towards achievement of the mission statement in the short term, in the medium term and in the long term. Now, if we understand these three elements, that is when we begin the strategic planning process. So, the strategic planning process or any process that we want to talk about begins with what we refer to as analysis. Now, because we are talking about a strategic planning process, we have called this strategic analysis. Now, you must be thinking that what is the outcome or what is the purpose of doing the analysis? How should I be doing the analysis? What would I get? by doing the analysis. So let's first understand what will be the outcome or output once I have completed the strategic analysis stage of the strategic planning process. So the outcome of the strategic analysis phase would be the position appraisal of the organization. Remember whatever we will discuss the audience for this will be an entire organization. So we will be talking about the organization. So once we have completed strategic analysis, we would have a clear understanding of my organization in respect to my customers, my competitors and the market as a whole. So I will know that okay, as on today, what is my market standing? Now when we do analysis, we have to do analysis in a very structured manner. Note strategic planning process. The critical, the most critical element of this entire process is strategic analysis. Because if I get my position wrong, if I get my inputs wrong, then all actions that I take basis those inputs will also be incorrect. Now when we talk of strategic analysis, we will be basically dividing the analysis into two parts. An internal analysis which is inward looking towards the organization and an external analysis which will be organization looking outside. Now when we talk of internal analysis, we have different tools and I have listed some of the tools that we will be covering as we move forward in our online classes. Now the first is called as the RC grid. Short form, R stands for resource, C stands for competency. So this becomes the resource 
competency grid. I repeat, resource competency grid. And in another words, in some of your books, you might also find that this is also referred to as the strategic capability of an organization. So internal analysis, I need to look at what is my strategic capability. You see some stars here, I'll talk about them in a bit. Now, another tool that we have for internal analysis is called as the Mendelos Power Interest Matrix. Complicated, but in a nutshell, this helps us to analyze our different categories of stakeholders. The word is stakeholders, not shareholders, because shareholders are a part of my overall stakeholders. So, a resource competency grid, Mendelos Power Interest Matrix, two tools that we will use to do an internal analysis as part of strategic analysis stage. Now, when I have to do an external analysis, I make use of two very famous tools. First is the Porter's Five Forces, which helps me to analyze a particular market. Second, I use a PESTEL framework. Now, PESTEL framework, the P to the L, are the different environmental variables that an organization needs to study to be able to understand whether the environment in the short, medium and long term is favorable, unfavorable and what does an organization need to do about it. So P stands for political, E stands for economic, S stands for social, T stands for technological, E stands for environmental and L stands for legal. So internal tools we have two, external we have two, there are more tools but Primarily, this is what we will be talking about when we talk about this entire journey. Now, you see that there is an element which is referred to as SWOT. It's written in between internal and external. The reason is simple. SWOT consists of four components. Strengths, weakness, opportunities and threats. Strengths and weakness are internal and inward looking. So, these are the strengths and weaknesses of an organization as on date. Opportunities and threats are something which will come to an organization in future. They are available maybe as on today, but an organization needs to develop an understanding before they exploit the opportunities and they mitigate the threats. So SWOT lies between internal as well as external. So S and W are internal, O and T are external. So that is what we do as part of strategic analysis. I analyze to understand the relative standing of my organization. Now, if we move forward, strategic analysis, the next stage after analysis is a choice. So I know what my current standing is, but I also need to know where is that I want to go in future. Now, if I know my current position and if I know where I want to go in future, that is where I will make some strategic choices. We have all read in economics, resources are limited, needs are unlimited. So for us to meet the needs in places the resources, we will have to prioritize. But how do I prioritize? So for us to be able to prioritize, what I have done is between strategic analysis and strategic choice, I put in a framework which is called as gap analysis. Now gap analysis is a very simple framework. What it does in a nutshell, it enables an organization to plot its current state of operations which will be anything above zero and it also tells an organization that where does it want to go in future. So I have a gap between current and future. So when I have to move from current to future, I will have to make choices which will then enable me to achieve my mission statement. So anything that I do, any action that I take, in and the end has to help me achieve my mission and vision. So once we understand the gap between my current versus future state of operations, I go on to make my strategic choices. Now, there are three choices that are available for any organization. The first is what we refer to as the BCG matrix, which is the Boston Consulting Group matrix. It is a matrix which enables an organization to understand its product portfolio. Second is what we refer to as the ANSOF matrix. ANSOF matrix is an extension of BCG. The reason I say this is BCG talks about products, 
Anshop talks about products and market. So market is a new component that gets added when we talk of the Anshop matrix. The last of strategic choice that we have is the Porter's generic strategy. So many frameworks that we will be covering in YouTube will be by a person called Michael Porter. So we have the Porter's five forces here again by Michael Porter. We also have the Porter's generic strategies. Now Porter's generic strategies talks about product pricing. Now very simplistically put, I'll give you a hint up front. We have three strategic choices. How do I know? What do I need to do? So the first is it will come through a gap analysis and understanding of gap analysis will tell you whether I have to go for BCG or ANSOF or both. Keep in mind whether you select BCG or you select ANSOF, portal generic strategies will have to be implemented because it talks about product pricing and we have products as a common element at BCG as well as ANSOF. So that was strategic analysis and the second stage is strategic choice. Now once I made a choice, I need to implement the chosen choice. Now before I implement, again there is a check. Now the check is what we refer to in our language at Cabbage is the litmus test. So whatever you've chosen as a strategy needs to be tested against specific criteria which will ensure that the chosen strategy is sustainable. Now the, fact, the three elements of the litmus test are S which stands for suitability, S stands for suitability, F stands for feasibility and A stands for acceptability. Now suitability has a single star, I also have a single star against my mission and vision. So my strategic choice should be suitable to help me achieve my mission and vision. That's the first test. So this has to be a yes for all three elements. So suitability for my mission and vision. Feasibility. It has two stars. Feasibility will be gauged through my density grid. So two stars against resource competency grid. So do I have the strategic capability to implement the choice that I am making to achieve my mission vision statement. So hundreds of times in our classes going forward we will keep referring back to our mission and vision because this is why an organization exists and this is why all actions that an organization takes are diverted to ensure that this is achieved. So suitability to my mission and vision. Feasibility comes from my strategic capability or the RC grid, resource competency grid and the last element of the litmus test is acceptability. Whatever you choose, if you have the capability to deliver, it should also be acceptable to your stakeholders. So stakeholders are the people who we will plot when we will use the Mendelow's power interest matrix. So if I have buying from stakeholders, if I have strategic capability and if the chosen strategic choice helps me achieve my mission statement, it becomes sustainable. Sustainability is driven by these three elements. So keep in mind, this is the interlinkage that the examiner will also expect from you when you appear for your case study exam. How do I apply a technical model to a business problem to achieve the organizational goals? Now strategic analysis, output was position appraisal, then we had a gap analysis which helped you make a choice. After you make a choice, you go through a litmus test. If you pass all these three variables, if all these three variables are a yes, that is when you go ahead and implement your chosen strategic choice. Now the next step after strategic choice is strategic implementation. As I said at the beginning of this video, strategic analysis is the most critical component of the entire strategic planning process. If the data here is right, if it gives you the right outcome, that is when you will be able to take the right decisions. Now once you have taken the right decisions, the next stage is strategic implementation and strategic implementation. If there is effective implementation, the word is effective implementation, that is what will help you achieve your ultimate goals. 
So strategic implementation requires two elements. One of the another critical elements of your E2 syllabus is change management. Now when we do a strategic planning process, we are not talking about small changes, we are talking about major and material changes. Any major and material change will invoke change management. So if change management is effective, that is what will lead to an effective strategic implementation. Effective strategic implementation will help you achieve your goals in the short term, in the medium term and the long term. Now one element of strategic implementation is change management. The other element is people will need to be rewarded and recognized for people who accept change. So people who support strategic implementation would need to be rewarded. So the company will have to put in place a reward and recognition structure which will act as a motivator for employees, for other stakeholders to accept change. So strategic analysis, strategic choice, now we are at strategic implementation. Now anything which has been implemented will have to be reviewed, will have to be controlled, will have to be monitored because even if there is effective implementation, if you do not have data to showcase whether we are on track, off track or beyond track, that is when problems can occur. So the next logical stage in the strategic planning process after implementation would be review and control. Now within review and control, there is a model that we will be talking about which is called as the balanced scorecard. So balanced scorecard helps you to monitor different elements of what the company's actions are to be able to visualize or gauge a picture in terms of whether the company is doing good, whether the company is not doing good or whether the company needs improvement. Now when we talk of balanced scorecard, we need to keep in mind two critical elements. The first is CSF which is the critical success factor. Now these are those critical success factors. If you achieve these critical success factors, you are sure or you are guaranteed that you will be achieving your mission and vision statement. Now critical success factors ideally should not be more than 2 to 3. Let me give you an example. Any company which is servicing customers, one of the critical success factors for that company would be the customer satisfaction score. So customer satisfaction becomes a critical success factor for an organization. So if the CSAT score, the customer satisfaction score is good, then the company is doing good. And when the company is doing good, it is implied that the company will be able to achieve its goals. So CSF should not be more than 2 to 3. Now, if customer satisfaction is a critical success factor, how do I come to know whether the customer satisfaction is good or bad? So, for me to understand my customer satisfaction score, I need to have some key performance indicators which will help me understand whether the CSAT is good or bad. Now, continuing with our example of customer satisfaction, so one of the ways in which I can measure customer satisfaction is if I start measuring the number of complaints that I get from customers, if those complaints continue to go down, which means the customers are happy and the customer satisfaction will be good. So CSFs are monitored through key performance indicators. So for every critical success factor, you should have at least two to three key performance indicators. Now review and control, whatever is the outcome feeds back to my strategic analysis stage. So strategic planning process is an ongoing process. It is not a one time job that you prepare a framework, you do some analysis, you make some choices, you continue to review and things go perfectly fine. If you achieve a particular target, you increase your target. So the ultimate goal is I have to achieve my mission statement. Mission statement is forever. So the strategic planning process will also be done on an ongoing basis. So these are at a high level, at a very overall level, the key elements of the strategic planning process. If we understand this right, if we understand the different components, if we understand the interlinkage between these two elements or these different stages of the strategic planning process, our life becomes easy. So this was in a nutshell the entire strategic planning process. Now in our future lectures what we will be doing is we will pick on every specific framework, every specific model 
talk you through, help you understand that framework. And while we understand that framework, we will also help you build the interlinkage between two different frameworks. Now keep in mind from an objective examination of SEMA, an understanding of the frameworks is sufficient. But when you graduate to go and appear for a case study exam, the interlinkage between the frameworks, why are we using the particular technical model to solve a business problem to help an organization achieve its mission and vision statement is critical. So thank you for your attention today. So this was our input on the strategic planning process.